How's it going, everybody? Uh, we're out here. Figured we'd go outside for this for this patterns and pour overs. Got my new travel kit. You seen in the first of the video there, and been waiting quite long to get it. So finally got my hands on all the stuff I needed to make it. So we'll have a lot of good coffee on the bank ends, and every time we go fishing now, I don't have to carry things in like bags and book bags and all that kind of stuff, but I can have it all in one spot. So just want to show that off a little bit. I'm drinking Subtext coffee here today from uh, Toronto, Ontario. And uh, this is a Mexican coffee. We haven't really, I haven't really drank many Mexican coffees, but this is going to be my first impression of it. it. Smells pretty good. I think it's going to be pretty good. I mean, I've had a, I've had a handful of Mexican coffees, but this one sounds pretty good at the tasting notes. We'll see. But anyways, today we're going to be tying a Canadian sedge, and uh, it's kind of one of those patterns I haven't saw many people tie it online and. It's kind of hard to even find online. I don't even know where I found it originally. I think I found it on like a bulk or something. But anyways, it's basically just a caddis pattern. It's a little bit different than what you see typically. It's a kind of like a tealy green floss is like the main body color. It's kind of kind of cool. And uh, instead of using deer hair or elk hair, we're going to be using some some uh, wood duck flank or mallard flank. So. So first off, we're going to start with a size 12, just a standard, standard dry fly hook. There we go. I just got some uni thread here today. I got some ADOT gray. And there's no tail on this fly actually, so. Once I tie this in, I'll tie in my body materials. We'll bring that to the barb of the hook. Cut that off. Mm. I guess the other good thing about being outside is my feather trimmings and stuff. I can just throw those away because it's just a feather. <laughs> but first off, we're going to get some tinsel. Got some really small stuff here. And we, this stuff's actually uh, gold on one side and silver on the other. So what you want to do, this always used to frustrate me when I first started tying, but the side that you don't want to use, you have that upward and you tie that in upward. And then the silver will show once I tie it in here. So you tie in your tensile. And you want to get some floss here. I'm just going to cut this off. This is kind of a garbage piece. Just tie this in. It's actually kind of a cool color. I've had this floss since I was a kid. But it's kind of like a teal green. Just want to make that body, build that body up a bit. And then... Spin the floss. I'll wrap this the whole way to the front. And we'll bring it back. Really doesn't matter. I kind of like a bigger body on these flies. This is one of those flies that you don't really fish it often, but I've had a couple encounters where, or a couple incidences where the trout weren't taking anything. And I remember one time I was fishing a trout 
fished it for a half hour, tried like 10 different flies, could not catch it. And then I put this Canadian sedge on and it was the ticket. Nailed it first cast, so. It's one of those flies that you just want to have in your box. It's kind of like a secret, secret pattern, little secret weapon. For me anyways. Cut this access off here. Okay, tie that off. Trim that. And we'll spin this back around. Yeah, we'll tie the tinsel on here. I want to give a good space between that, just give it a little shine to it. There we go. I used to use white floss with this, but I hate using floss on floss. So, kind of switched over to tinsel. I see some other people do that too, so. Okay. Give that a good tie off. Okay, so now we're ready for the wing. For the wing, I guess you could kind of use any kind of flank you really want. I think this is teal here. But I have used wood duck and mallard, so just get a good piece out of here. Here you go, just get a good piece here. What I like to do, I'll just strip that. Then you're left with a little tip here. And what I like to do, I'll kind of just fold it, give it a good fold in. And you want that to extend, I get it to extend a little bit past the bend of the hook. That's it. Just a hair past. like that. Cut that off. Broke my thread. <laughs> Sometimes I pull too hard on that, break my thread off, tie that back on. Okay, and then lastly, tie in some heckle here. And you just want to use some grizzly. I got some cape here today. But, saddles, A1. Just want to find where that matches up. And strip it back. Coffee actually is pretty good. I'll do about four or five turns with the heckle here. There we go. Go. Just whip that off to finish. Put 
I didn't even bring my whip finisher. I knew I'd forget something, but I'll just do it with my fingers. There you go. Get a little glue. Don't even gotta use my UV light today because we got got the sun here. It's actually ripping hot right now. Put a little of that UV glue on there. Set that set for a sec. Should be good to go. And that is a Canadian sedge. Pretty good fly, I think. Yeah, so next time you're on the water, make sure to try out the Canadian sedge. Uh, you can kind of tie it in, I'd say, probably any size you want. Um, I don't know what it is about the fly, but sometimes it really works. And I don't use it a ton, but when I decide to use it, I'm telling you, it's a little secret weapon. So, uh, we're going to do this time. I know I've been watching, I mean, I've been tying flies since I was a little kid and always watched YouTube videos. And one thing that I always wanted to see was someone that would tie the fly and then go catch a fish on it. So we're at a park here today. There are only little dinks that are in these brooks, but we're going to get Will to tie this fly on. We're going to go catch one right now. So we'll go do that. We'll try to catch a dink down that little hole. Hopefully we'll catch it with the fly uh, Josh is tied. Juice. Okay, we were walking. Yeah. I looked down there, I seen a big old monster. Five inches. <laughs> now I'm gonna go try to climb down. I don't know how, but I'm gonna go try for that trout. See if I can get him. I don't know if this is the best way. Here we go. We didn't anticipate it taking this long for us to catch fish on that fly. <laughs> well. Not gonna lie, I didn't think the water was this low. Give Will about two hours of fishing. Couldn't catch, couldn't catch one. He got, he got a little fed up. Give me the rod. We just gotta catch a fish on this fly. I can't let you guys down. I can't say this fly's good and then not catch one. So we're back to square one. There was a little muskrat. There was a little muskrat swimming around here earlier, but I think he's gone. I hope he's gone. Scaring my trout away. Okay, well. Oh, good one went for it. Did you see it? No. Great. I hit, I shouldn't hit the water there. There he goes. Got him. <laughs> that was cool. There you go. There's the proof. You can catch a fish. You can catch a trout on them. Big ones like that all day, every day. There you go. 